Welcome to the John Gardena Classroom, where we are back live together, the Doctor and Johnny Boy. We're back. <laughs> so good to we, be back. Yeah, just to let everyone know, um, <clears throat> there was some sort of hurricane that came through a couple mm. weeks ago, and Dan did not have internet at his house, so this is the first week he does. So, yeah. well, it's a beautiful thing. We're back. It We're is. back, baby. So... Is- Feels no good. More, no more car videos. <laughs> yeah, no more car videos. Have you seen those? <laughs> so um, Dan's going to start off with the verse tonight. We are on week forty-two, which means mm. we only have ten left. So congratulations to you for your consistency of being here with us. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. All right, Danny boy. All right. This week's verse is Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven and thirty-eight. Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. It is a great commandment. It's a good and one. We are going to learn from the observation today. So Christ's words are unambiguous. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. But sometimes, despite our intentions, we fall short of God's plan for our lives when we become embittered with ourselves, with our neighbors, or most especially with our Creator. If we are to please God, we must cleanse ourselves of the negative feelings that separate us from others and from Him. 1 Corinthians 13 says, We are told that love is the foundation upon which all our relationships are to be built. Our relationships with others and our relationships with our Maker. So today and every day, Fill your heart with love, never yield to bitterness, and praise the Son of God who, in his infinite wisdom, made love his greatest commandment. Mm. Sound wisdom right there, huh? Yeah. Man. So what do you, what do you think about this verse and uh, maybe your own experience or just meditate on what it means to you, buddy? Yeah. Um, and I, I love this because it is... Uh, like Jesus said, the first and the great commandment. Um, I love that Jesus, he takes what, you know, um, the Jews at the time knew as the Ten Commandments. He kind of takes them and he frames them within his life of what he's saying in that moment, you know, as he's going around ministering on the earth um, in his time here. And he he says, um, you shall love the Lord your God with all your Right, all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, um, and and what's amazing is it's not just a commandment. I believe at that moment it was like a commission, where he's saying, "Now you can, because I am here and I'm showing you how." And I think that that's amazing, because as Jesus is revealed to us, it enables us to live like God. It enables us to love like we're supposed to love. It enables us to, he shows us the love of God so that we can in turn receive it, allow it to transform us and love others. And he does it for everything else. The revelation of Jesus, Jesus being revealed, enables us to live holy, to be transformed. Um, and it renews our mind and, and literally redeems us in a moment um, over and over and over again until we become more and more sanctified like him. And so I, I think Jesus is, is both commanding and commissioning people in this moment when he says this. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree, Dan. I think um, it's very, very sound what you just said. He is commissioning us to do that, just that. I mean, God created us in his image because he loved us and he wanted a relationship with us. And he gave us his son to really make that happen um, from our original sin. And I think what I've learned in my life is that you can't have hate or you try not to have hate. So if you look at it from the total other end of the spectrum, so the opposite of love is hate. Mm. So I question every one of you to what do you hate and who do you hate? So to mend the heart, to really go out and do what Jesus said. It's to love your Lord, you know, with all your heart, soul, and mind. Hmm. You have to remove hate. So I was telling kids, I was um, on a DC trip the other weekend, 
Um, I just tell kids, I don't hate anybody. And they're like, nobody? Even people that did you wrong? And I say, I forgave them. Like, you, you literally forgave them? And I said, yeah. Because I don't want, I don't want that feeling of anti-love. And when you hate anything, it is the opposite of love, what God commands us to do. So yeah. if you look at your relationships in life, and being this for every dad, it first started with your, your wife. You grew to love your wife. Um, probably was more of the flesh at first. Usually what happens is I'm attracted to you, mm-hmm. and then you go through that period. But then it goes to a deeper level, and is it's service for one another, which is really the ultimate sacrificing for each other's needs, which is love. And yeah. then when your first child is born, which is probably my best day of my life, because you and your spouse created something out of love. And when yeah. you see this little baby in your arms, it is like you understand what God had in mind for, for us when we were created. Yeah. And it's such a deep, profound love that if we just live within that, that structure, what we, he did, Jesus, did commission us, like you said, it's true, to love one another, right? And to love God with just that passion, with all, all of our body. So just like you love your children as a father, you can even imagine the way God loves us. It's unimaginable. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think if you have to think of the, those two spectrums of trying to be non-hateful and not hate anything, but then look at the beauty of all the love that you have witnessed in your own life from your marriage and from your children's birth and from all the joys that they have in their life. So you get to witness that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. I remember when my daughter was born, I just walked into this new realm of knowing how much I was loved by God the Father as a son because I had become a father at that moment. And just the the tenderness that came over my heart for this little girl that I didn't even know, you know what I mean? Like she, yeah. she'd been on the earth moments. Um, I didn't know what her personality was going to be like. I didn't know what she would do in her life. I didn't know if she'd even, you know what I mean? Like, you, you don't, you don't know. Like, of course you hope she loves you, but like, you know, you may have a rough yeah. relationship. Like, you don't know, like you don't even know the, the nuances of what her life would be like. And you would love, you'd, I loved her and I would die for her in that moment. And I just was overwhelmed and just smacked in the face with the reality of how much God loves me, of what I knew. But at that point, it became so real that um, it just transformed me. And um, and it's a na- and and it just transformed me and enables me to to love others and to love God more. Well, there's a great quote from C.S. Lewis that's in this mm-hmm. book, and it it says, "A man's spiritual health." is exactly proportional to his love for God. Yeah. So think about that for a second. <laughs> hmm. Is maybe you don't have a strong relationship with God. Well, your spiritual health is determined really of how much you love God. So if you have that heart of gratitude towards him each day, that thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you've given me. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my job. Thank you for food. Like just praising him glorifying him. Yeah. That's what we're commissioned to do. Jesus has told us that when he was on earth, very simple, many times. So I think we need to check ourselves along this journey of life. It was, where is our spiritual health at? And if it is resonates with not connecting with God, not loving God and hating things and people, then we're way off from where our spiritual wellness needs to be. Yeah, And if that is you right now, guess what? It's okay. Uh, we've had periods, and I'm sure I'll speak on myself here, but there have been periods in my life that I have felt distance from God. And guess what? Every time it was like that, there was such hatred in my heart. Hmm. So if you could start carving that out and start putting it back together with God's help, then you see the, the pieces of heaven that you're going to be a witness of. And, and it's just peace and all the joys that, you know, we, we talk, that Paul talked about, you know, peace, love, and joy. And who doesn't yeah. want that? Who, who wants to be angry? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, and it, it embitters you, man. Oh, for sure. So bad. It's like poison. 
it's it's toxins, man. Mm -hmm. Evil toxins. That's the devil's wrath right there, and that's what he wants. Yeah, that's his greatest one of his greatest things besides pride is to get you um, to fight amongst each other, to hate one another, and to hate God. And he then he he won. So yeah. let's do the opposite of what Satan wants for your life. Let's let's do what God commissioned us to do is love him first. Yeah, it's good. You got the tip, brother? Yeah. So this week's tip is because God first loved you, you should love him. And one way that you demonstrate your love is by obeying him. I mean, <laughs> straightforward. So you know, straightforward. I, I love obedience because it's it's really a decision, you know. And... um it's a good start if if you don't feel like doing something. It's a good discipline if you don't feel like doing something. Just to, just for the sake of honoring God, just do it and ask that the Holy Spirit would change your heart while you do it. And He will, He will absolutely. And um, sometimes it's hard to obey, but it's always worth it. It it is. And I think the other thing too, as I think about, it, is like you know we do have God gave us free will. And with that responsibility of free will, the greatest thing you can do is follow God's will. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Think about yeah. what I just said. Like, yeah. Free will. Yes, there is. He does not want us to be just his robots to do his will mm. in, in the sense of like, just do this because that's what I commanded you. No, he wanted, he wanted you to choose him. Yeah. And out of his love, he wanted that reciprocal factor back. Um, to know that he is the one who created you and loves you. So let's pray on that. Let's, let's yeah. pray on, on God's love for us. Lord, Heavenly Father, I pray tonight for everyone who, who listens that their ears may be open, that their spirit may be awakened, and that the heart will be for you. That each one of each one listening tonight, their heart would be for you, Lord. Yes. I think that we need to also think about how we could carve all the hatred out of our heart and, and ask for forgiveness for things that we've done, but also to forgive those who have wronged us, to let those things go and to move forward towards the closeness that we have for Jesus Christ and the Father's love for us. Lord, Heavenly Father, through this journey of life, let us be beacons of light. Let us walk in this journey as true disciples and to love one another, and to share, and be a witness of, of your eternal love for us, because you made us in your image, and because of that, you want us to return back to you out of pure love and divinity for you. So let us, again, let's do your will, and let us be more like you, and walk through this journey to be a Christ-like individual. We ask these things in your holy name. Amen. 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 And it was, it's, yeah. it's hard to go deep with something so simple. <laughs> like this is the commandment, right? Yeah. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. It's that, that simple. So yeah. as Dan and I uh, have said to you tonight, let's just be obedient to that command. Uh, the, one of the great commissions besides spreading the good news. And again, let that hate be gone from your heart. Word. Word to your mother. I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> I approve this message. <laughs> and I approve this message. All right, brother. That That's was uh, short and sweet, but there's nothing else to talk about when you when Jesus said it so perfectly. Yeah, true. All right, everyone. All right, Be everybody. Blessed. We love you. Peace. Peace.